Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna talk about this guy. Okay, first let's see it work. If I press any of these buttons, if I press this button, it goes that way. And if I press any of the other buttons, it actually basically starts from wherever I press. We need to be able to read eight buttons and to write eight LEDs. And that normally takes 16 pins. I only have connected here two of the Arduino pins. Basically these two pins, A5 and A4, and the ground and the power. And that's also ground and that's it. So basically ground power and these two wires connected to the IO expander that we talked about in the last video. But unlike in the last video, now there's only one and it's doing both input and output at the same time, which is pretty cool. So here's the diagram. There are eight of these, of course, but I only draw two of them. They're all the same. Let's talk about the two scenarios. One of them is to read the button and the other one is to actually turn on the LED. Let's turn on the LED first. That's simpler. Normally, all these pins will be all high. So there'll be a plus here and a plus there. And therefore the LED will not lit up because they're both plus. To turn on one of these LEDs, what you would do in the code is you set the desired LED bit to be low. And so when this is low, now all of a sudden we have the current going through here, through the LED and lit up. So that's how you would actually turn on any of these LEDs by putting the particular bit, one of those eight bits, low. Now to actually read the button, you would first set the actual bits to high. This is still will not lit up. But now it could detect when you press this button, we will be bringing that pin low to ground and it will be able to detect that it is now low. So let's look at the code. So here's the code. Maybe it's about two screen full. It shouldn't take too long to go through. Since our IO expander is an I2C device, we need a wire library. I do not know why they call it wire instead of I2C library, but that's what we need. I'm going to paste it here to Notepad++ so I could magnify the code like this. So that's the library we need to talk to our IO expander, which is on the I2C bus. We need some variable to keep track of what is the actual address of our I2C device. And I'm going to skip these for now. And I'm going to go down here to the setup. We need to initialize the wire library. And since I'm on the Nano, I can take the default IO port for I2C, which is A4 and A5. And here's the address of our I2C device. The IO expander is at address 20. Next, let's talk about the two functions I wrote to make life easier to communicate with the IO expander. One of them is to write data to the IO expander. The other one is going to be to read data from. So let's talk about the write first. So you just tell it what bit pattern you want to display on these LEDs. The first thing we do is we tell the wire library that we're about to send something at that I2C address. And then we actually send the bits and then we just say, yeah, we're done. This is going the other way. Instead of writing, we're about to read something from these switches. This is something specific to the IO expander. It requires us to actually set all the outputs to one before we can do a read. And then we actually start doing the read. And to do the read is very similar. So we say yeah, we're about to communicate with that address. And now we are request some data from that address and we tell it how many bytes we want. So when the data arrives, we put it into this variable and then we're done. We basically return that variable onto whoever call us. Now that we know how to read and write to our IO expander, let's uh, look at our loop. Loop is pretty simple. We just keep on reading those switches. As long as nobody press any of the switches, all these bits will be one, remember? Because when we press the button, we'll bring that to ground. So if nobody press that, all these bits will be all ones. So as long as it is one, we don't want to do anything. But as soon as it is not all one, we want to do something. Now that we know that somebody pressed one of these switches, we need to figure out which one of those switches is actually pressed. And to do that, I just basically loop through bit index zero through seven. I'll check this bit and then I'll check that bit and so on and so forth until I reach this one. And for every one of those, I just say, look at the bits that we got from the IO expander and check that particular index. So bit index will be starting with zero. So we'll check, is this bit zero? meaning did somebody press that button? If not, we continue on this, is this bit zero, meaning somebody pressed that switch, and so on and so forth until we find one that actually is low, which means that's the one that's being pressed. And then when that happens, we know 
the index 0, 1, 2, 3. Let's say we press this one. We know that it's bit index 3 that somebody pressed. And we just pass that bit index 3 to the explosion. So the animation could start doing the animation from that point to the left and to the right, which we will see next. So let's say we pass in a 3 here. So that's a start that's going to be 3. What we're doing basically is we're trying to figure out something to its left and to its right and just continue on on both directions. So to do that loop, I have basically this I going from 0 through 7 and it's going to go both directions. We'll see here in a second. So on the lower side, we say take wherever you're starting and subtract 0 originally, which means it's going to start wherever it was. And on the higher side, we add 0, which is going to be wherever it was. So it'll stay at 3. And these two if statement here make sure that we are not trying to set a bit that is like outside that is greater than the number of bits we have here or less than the number of bits. So as long as we're within the range, we're actually going to clear that bit, remember? We're going to assume that all the bits is going to be set to high, and high actually means that they are off, remember? With this is plus and that's plus means off. So to turn the LED on, we actually want to clear the bit. So originally, we only clear the bit that is the one that is passed in here. So that'll be three, this will be three, that'll be three, so we clear bit 3 and we write it to the IO expander so bit 3 is the only one that's going to be low because that's only been cleared all the other ones are still high and so bit 3 is the only one that's going to be turned on and then the next time around within this loop here I will be equal to 1 so now we are going to subtract 1 from this one we're going to add 1 from that one so basically instead of 3 we're going to have one of them setting this one, the other one setting that one. Again, we start with all of them being one, meaning none of them are on, and we clear the bit four and bit two, and that will turn on those two LEDs, and all the other ones will be off. And then we go on and so on and so forth, such that bit five and bit one will be on, and none of the other ones will be off, because every time we go through the loop, we set the bits all to back to one here. And then after we set the bit, we actually wait here, if we clear them right away, we can't see it. So we wait for 90 milliseconds so we can actually see that. And then we clear the display, meaning set them all back to high, meaning turn them all off. And we just do this over and over again until we do this seven times, guaranteeing that if we start from here, we hit that one, or we start from here, we hit that one. If we start from the middle, actually, we did not have to go all the way to seven, but it doesn't matter <laughs> uh, because we have this if statement over here that checks, make sure that we do not set a bit that is beyond our boundary. But that's everything, so I'll share the code in the YouTube description. You can check it out and download and play with it. It's been a fun project. I think it's so cool to be able to deal with basically 16 IO pins with just the two wires. Thanks for letting me share this with you. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, bye-bye.